Hi, and welcome to my video on MainStage 2, uh, MainStage being a component within Apple's Logic, uh, Logic Pro Suite. So what I'm going to show you how to do today is how to get a backing track into your uh, MainStage patch. So just as a starter, uh, I'm going to choose a template just to begin with. Now I'm going to modify the layout of it, but I want something to start with. Uh, now there is a template within uh, the main stage templates that you can see right here. I'm just opened up at the the main stage template uh, screen. There is one where you can choose to do a single amp and one backing track. But what I'd like to do is walk you through the details of how to actually do that. So uh, I'm going to add those uh, those pieces in manually. So I'm going to just choose the single amp here. And you can just enjoy my wallpaper for a sec there while this is loading. So main stage will load up the template. And the first screen I get here is just a splash screen just telling me that my hardware controls aren't yet assigned. And I know that. So I'm just going to click OK. And uh, it's now loaded up the, uh, the template within the screen. So I've already got a reasonable idea as to what I want to do. And... Um, there's a few pieces in here that uh, there's a few pieces I need rather to support my uh, backing track that don't exist within this layout. So the first thing I'm going to do is go into the layout and change things. And as most of you already know, the way I go into layout mode is in the uh, top left hand side of the screen here. You'll see the the main stage uh, mode menu. And there's a number of options layout, edit, perform, and full screen. So I'm going to go from edit mode, which I'm in right now, to layout mode. Okay, and I want to just create some space for myself. So I'm just going to go through and uh, delete quite a few things here. Now there's different ways of doing this, but I'm just taking the, uh, the quick and dirty way of doing it. So let me go through and select all these guys and just delete them. Okay, because I don't need a, a set and patch list that long. I do need some kind of set and patch list, but not quite as long as that. So right now I'm going to now look at the screen controls palette, which is in the bottom part of the screen here. And just scroll through to find the compact patch list, which is right here. So I'm going to grab hold of that and drag it into my layout. And I think the other components that I need, and again, I'm looking at uh, functions to support playback. If you scroll through, you'll find that there, uh, that there are a couple of options or a couple of controls that are already here for that, ah, right here. So there's a large playback and a mini playback control within the palette. I'm going to choose the mini playback piece. So let me grab that and I'll bring it over and add that to my layout as well. Now you can see right here, and I'll zoom on this a little bit more so you can see it. Logic has this nice pre-built component here, and I'm going to use this piece to support the functions within my uh, backing track transport. So, uh, for example, on this first green button, I'm going to use that to do play pause. The second one, I'll use that for um, for cycling back to the beginning of the backing track. I'll use the blue one to mute the the, um, the the backing track volume, and then this rotary knob right here to actually control the volume. And then probably in here where you see the 127, uh, I'll put in the um, put in the position that the playhead is at within the backing track uh, in uh, time value. Okay, so now that I have that in there. Uh, again, I'm going to continue to create a little bit of space for myself. Let me move this expression pedal over there. And again, you could you can do whatever you want. Uh, you can customize this to suit your own your own needs. Uh, the next piece that I want to add in, uh, let me go through here. Is personally, I like to see visually what's going on in the backing track. And fortunately. Um, uh, main stage does provide you with a, a very handy icon within the palette right here called waveform and I'm going to drag that and put it into the screen and that just allows me to see visually what's going on within the within the backing track itself now the other pieces that I personally kind of like is 
to have uh, a couple of progress indicators so I'm going to add that in there as well. I'm just going to modify and copy it. So since I already uh, just selected this uh, progress indicator here. Let me just customize that. That's actually going to show me how far along I am visually within my backing track. So let me modify the layout of that, uh, which is right over here. Okay, so right now it's displaying parameter and value. I don't want that. I want nothing. And I'm going to add in my own hardware label and I will call that position. Now I want a second one of these, so I'll copy that by doing a option click and drag over here okay and uh, yeah let's put it right there it's pretty close good enough and now let me uh, lengthen this guy a little bit okay so I'm just being a little particular here with the alignment you don't have to be. That's just me. All right, there we go. And let's change the label of this one right here to uh, this will be for the remaining time value. Okay. And let me just go up here a little more for you. All right, so the next pieces that I'd like to modify are the uh, transport buttons right here or the buttons that I'm going to use for the for the transport so let me look at this first one and I'm going to use that for play and once again I'm going to modify this right now it's displaying the parameter I don't want it to do that so I'm going to say nothing and I'm going to add in my own label this is going to be used for play pause I'm going to do the same thing right here and once more I want nothing I'm going to add my own hardware label in and I'm going to use that button to go back to the start of the backing track. So let's call that cycle. Here, cycle. Okay, and then on this button, so again, I'm just going to zoom this so you can see it a little better. Okay, I'm going in here and I'm saying parameter, nothing add my own hardware la label and let's call this one mute okay so now we have this little uh, playback component here that has been uh, cosmetically set up and labeled the way that we want it we still have to do the functional side of it uh, but we'll do that a little bit later now the next thing that I want to do is uh, I'd like to be able to control the transport uh, through my uh, MIDI controller and in this case I'm using um, Behringer FCB 1010 so for the play button I'm gonna just click that and then I'm gonna assign a control or a MIDI control to it let me click learn and then I will press the foot switch and as you can see that's mapped it to my FCB 1010 uh, CC 14 the same thing for this cycle let me press another foot switch and there we go to sign it to 15 do the same thing for mute and there we go it assigned it to 26 so that's fine so what we've been able to do up to this point then is take this uh, playback component and customize it and map it to what our our needs are so far now we have to do a little more functional mapping but we'll do that later with at this point um, we're happy with the layout and the actual way it appears as well as the MIDI control assignments to it. So let's go back out of here and at this point in time I can go into edit mode. 